Hi class and welcome to our video lesson on 2-5. We're talking about postulates and proofs today. So here's what a postulate is. Um, three different things I'm going to talk about here. You don't have to write these down if you don't want to. Just listen as I explain them. A postulate is a true statement which does not require to be proved. We just use postulates, the second one, they're used to derive the other logical statements to solve a problem. Um, sometimes you'll hear these interchanged with the word axioms and postulates. They kind of are the same um, term, postulates and axioms. So here, now you can start writing down, this is postulate number one. Postulate number one is between or through any two points, there is exactly one line. So like if I were to draw a straight figure made up of points, that's the definition of a line, there's only one line that I could draw that connects these two points. Some might say, but Mr. Berge, I can go from this spot to this spot, and it's going through the same two points. No, it's not going through the same two points. If you could zoom in, this point right there is different than this point right there. So between any two points, there exists exactly one line. Here's postulate number two. Through any three points not on the same line, there exists exactly one plane. So if I were to connect these three points, this plane, a plane is a flat surface, through any three points, I could draw a plane. So any three points not on the same line that are non-collinear, there is exactly one plane. Postulate number three. A line contains at least two points. Kind of goes along with postulate number one. I can put a point right here, and I could put a point right here, and I could draw a line. Now, I could have more points on a line. I could have three points that are collinear, or four points that are collinear, or an infinite number of points that are collinear. But bottom line, I at least have to have two. A line is defined using two points. Number four, a plane consists of at least three non-collinear points. So in order for a flat surface, which is a plane, in order for that to exist, there has to be at least three points. Now remember, a plane goes infinitely in all directions. It's a flat surface that extends infinitely. So you need at least three points to have a flat surface to make a plane. There could be an infinite number of points. In fact, there are an infinite number of points on a plane, but there at least has to be three. Number five, if two points lie in a plane, then the entire line containing those points lies in that plane. So these two points, the two smiley faces here, they lie in plane M. And if I connect these two points with a line, there is no other way, let's say I call this line L, line L has to be contained in line M because the two points lie on plane M. I maybe said that wrong. Line L has to be contained in plane M because the two points lie in plane M, so the line containing the line that exists between those two points has to lie in the plane as well. There's no other way to draw this figure with the two points lying in plane M than to have L also lie in plane M. So that's postulate number five. Postulate number six, if two lines intersect, then their intersection is exactly one point. I can draw any two lines. I could draw two lines that intersect this way. And once again, their intersection is that point. I could draw two lines that intersect this way. No matter what I do, their intersection will always be one spot, and that one spot is called a point. Similarly, if two planes intersect, their intersection is always a line. So kind of picture this red rectangle as being a plane. It's a flat surface, and the same thing as this purplish color. When they intersect, their intersection is a line. It's line C, D. You could think about like the ceiling and a wall. When they intersect, their intersection is at a, cor is at a corner that runs from one corner to the other. So the intersection is a line. 
So when two flat surfaces intersect, that intersection is called a line. All right, we're going to be talking about the midpoint theorem as we talk more about proofs. We're done with postulates. Now we're going to talk about a proof. So to refresh yourself, you can write this down. The midpoint theorem is this. If M is the midpoint of a segment, then AM is congruent to MB. So here's my segment AB. If M is the midpoint, so if I put M right here and it's the midpoint, it cuts AB in half. This AM is congruent to MB. That's the definition of midpoint. So if I were to write a proof, a paragraph proof, we're going to be doing paragraph proofs and we're going to be doing two column proofs. Two column proofs are, in my experience, more oftentimes used. But right now in this video, that's where we're going to be talking about paragraph proofs. So there's five parts to a good proof. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to state what is to be proved. So the theorem or the conjecture. Step number two is we're going to list down the given information. This is oftentimes just writing down what the hypothesis is. Then we're going to draw a picture and we're going to make the correct markings um, appropriately. So that's going to be step number three. Step number four, similar to step number two, when we wrote the hypothesis for step number two, we're going to write the conclusion for step number four. We're going to state what is to be proved. And then we're going to actually write the proof using sentences. So let's practice this with the midpoint formula. So state what is to be proved. So we're going to basically write down this sentence, that conditional statement in if-then form. If M is the midpoint of AB, then AM is congruent to MB. That's what we're going to write down right here. If M is the midpoint of AB, then AM is congruent to MB. Step number two, we're going to write down the hypothesis. The hypothesis, remember, is the if part of the conditional statement. So M is the midpoint of AB. That is given to us. M is the midpoint of AB. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a picture. So when we draw a picture and we're going to mark it up, we're going to draw a segment AB and we're going to put M in the middle as the midpoint. Something like that. And my M was kind of off a little bit here. Maybe it should be more right there. Just estimating. And then when we mark it up, we say that AM is congruent to MB. So there we have the third step. The fourth step is we are going to write the conclusion. So the conclusion is the then part of a conditional statement. So AM is congruent to MB. AM is congruent to MB. That is the fourth step. And then the fifth step is to actually write the proof. So this proof is very short because the definition of midpoint is kind of right in there. By definition, here's step number five when we write the proof. By the definition of midpoint, AM equals AB. And by the definition of congruent, AM, that segment, is congruent to segment MB. So there you have successfully written the proof. We'll be doing more examples with this as we go along in the chapter. Last thing, we're going to state if a statement is sometimes true, always true, or never true. And if we can explain, that'd be great. Oftentimes, we use a picture to explain. So if plane T contains line EF and line EF contains G, then plane T contains G. So here, I'm going to draw a plane, and I'll call it plane T. And it contains line EF. So here's E. Here's F, and there's line EF. And EF contains G. So on line EF lies G. So then plane T contains G. G in my picture lies on plane T. So I just drew a picture that proves this statement false. Or sorry. I just drew a picture that proves that statement true. Is there any way I can draw a picture that proves the statement false? Well, you know, we could draw an infinite number of pictures. Here is also plain T. And I could also draw a line EF going this way. 
and G has to lie on that line, so then G also lies on the plane. So I could draw the picture a thousand different ways, but each picture, if I follow the instructions that are given to me, it, it's always going to end up where G, that point, lies on the plane. There's no other way to draw it. So this one is always. Going down to our next one, for line XY, if X lies in plane Q and Y lies in plane R, then plane Q intersects plane R. Okay, so let's draw a picture. If X lies in plane Q, um, so maybe to help make sense of this, I'm going to try to like use my classroom. So this might be sketchy, but we'll see what happens. Can you kind of picture that being my classroom? Like here is the ceiling, right? Here is the left side. So hopefully that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, come up to me tomorrow and I can talk through it a little bit more. So if X lies in plane Q, let's put X on the front wall, like where I'm writing on the smart board. So right there is plane X. So it's kind of on this front wall, okay? And then Y lies in plane R. So if Y, let's call this point right, right here Y. And that's going to be on like the right side of my classroom if you're looking at the front. So right here. Um, and so Y lies in plane R. So here is X lying in plane Q. And Y lies in plane R. Then play Q intersects plane R. So if I connect these two. It makes a line. Does my green plane intersect my blue plane? Yes, it does. It intersects right there. Right? So yes, those two planes intersect. Is there any other way I could draw a picture where they don't intersect and yet still follow these directions that I'm given? So I'm going to draw my classroom again. This one proves it true, by the way. So here's my classroom again. And I have X lies in plane Q. This time I'm going to put X on the left wall. So here's like the left wall right here. That plane. So here is going to be point X. It's on the left wall. So this wall right over here. And then Y lies in plane R. So again, I'm going to have Y be on the right wall. So here's the right wall, and I'm going to have Y lie on that wall, that plane. And now I'm going to connect these two because line X, Y, so as I connect them, just like this, it says, by information here, then plane Q intersects plane R. Does my red plane intersect with my blue plane? The answer is no, those are parallel planes. Yet I still followed the instructions that were given to me right here. So I also proved it false. So if it's sometimes true and sometimes false, then the answer is going to be sometimes. Last one, line GH contains three non-collinear points. So GH, I'll draw GH. Well, that is two points. So a third non-collinear point would have to be a third point that's not on the line. So if I do it here, well, now I didn't make a line that contains three non-collinear points because this would be two separate lines that connects those two. So that doesn't work. So bottom line, there is no way I can draw a line with three non-collinear points. They have to be collinear to be a line. So this one is a never. I can never have this situation. We'll get more practice on that when you get to class tomorrow.